what's going down, guys. I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and I'm here in my temporary setup, a little temporary office here in the background, but the videos, they don't stop. And I'm here with a dogfight, an epic dogfight between 4G versus 4G, Android versus Android. Pretty awesome versus pretty awesome, but one has to win. Here it is, the Samsung Droid Charge and the T-Mobile G2X, both awesome devices on their respective carriers. Verizon over here, T-Mobile over here. One gigahertz processor over here, four inch Super AMOLED, excuse me, 4.3 inch Super AMOLED display, eight megapixel camera, front facing camera, and it's one of two devices on Verizon to sport LTE. This one on the other hand, T-Mobile G2X, been out for a couple weeks now, one gigahertz, dual core processor, eight megapixel camera on the back, front facing camera, four inch display, and all around awesome as well. Which one's the best? You know, vanilla Android, TouchWiz based Android, Verizon 4G, T-Mobile 4G? We're gonna find out all that and more in the dogfight. First, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy. They're hooking us up with a couple of these and phones like this so we can give them away to you and you can win them in our One Paw Bandit game. So when you go into Best Buy Mobile, you walk out working, they'll help you set up your email, the web, everything you need to get going. But enough of that, let's get into it. Dogfight, which one of these is gonna win? So let's jump back into some of the programs here and take a look. I always like to do this in some of the Android videos. And one thing that was on my mind, I don't know if you'll notice it when we're scrolling through basic stuff like this, and you'll see it in the Quadrant Standard Scores, but there is a little bit of a lag. It's not noticeable, per se, when you're doing basic stuff, but I've seen it a couple of times on the Droid Charge. There's a little bit of a lag when you're going through stuff, as opposed to this. I mean, this is the most buttery smooth Android device I've ever used in my entire life. Now, I just got the Galaxy S2 in today, so that may change. But, I mean, just no lag whatsoever, incredibly fast, market loads up, bam, you know, it's network dependent right here, but bam, it kicked right into place with no lag whatsoever. I mean, everything just pops up incredibly fast with, uh, with no issue. So, you can see bam, bam, bam. So, very fast there as opposed to this. It does take a few seconds for things to start up or a few milliseconds longer. Now, does that matter to you? Maybe, maybe not. If you're an Android diehard, yeah, it's going to matter. If you're somebody that's just looking for a smartphone, man, eh, maybe not. But uh, the speed-wise, you know, there's a noticeable speed difference when comparing these side by side. But here's the Android market. You can see some improvements that have been made to this. Let me turn it in landscape mode so you can see it as well. And where this phone really shines, that green in that background is just so incredibly green thanks to the Super AMOLED Plus display. But anyway, Android market, you can see apps, games, Verizon. You have your uh, popular apps carousel up here. Go to Flight Track, for example. Go to Description. You can see, click on More there, some quotes. You can see the screenshots, sharing, reviews, related, developer info, market content, and more. And then when I go to buy it, I click on it, and I have to accept the permissions, full internet access. So not a dramatic different, uh, difference from previous versions of the Android market, but it's nice to see that improvement. It looks better. It's competing with you know established stores like the App Store. Obviously, this is the second most established after the App Store, but competing with that, a constant competition, and they've really done a good job with the improvements. Another thing about this automatic app updating, something that iOS does not have and it's still very frustrating. So I can go to my apps, for example, that I have pre-installed on there, that I've already installed on this device. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see once it loads up, if it does load up, you know, it will, there'll be an option to check box or a little check box where I can check automatic app updating. And it's much better as opposed to, you know, going in like you have to do with iOS, where you have to physically update each app every single time and put in your password. It's just this kind of mundane process you have uh, the ability to do automatic app updating. I can't talk today. See if it'll load up this time. Uh, and this is another issue I've had with Verizon. Their 4G LTE is very, very fast, but it's very inconsistent. Oftentimes the 4G will cut out, it'll go away, especially when you're using mobile hotspot because their mobile hotspot service is free until June 15th, whereas it's usually $20. Uh, and when I've used it and put it to the test, it works for about 10 minutes, then it just cuts out, cuts in constantly, where I can't upload a video or do any sort of work because it's constantly cutting in and cutting out. So 4G, very fast speeds, but beware you know, when it works. You can see a network error has occurred. And that may be an Android market thing because it looks like 4G is still working okay. Let's see if it loads up right now. I don't know which side it is. It looks like it might be Verizon's side, but the 4G icon is still up there. But this is exactly what I've been having with Verizon's LTE, constant issues. Very, very fast when it works. But uh, get the idea, Android market, significant improvements there. And I'll switch over to this one to take a look at Gmail. And I'm going to go over here, so uh, go back into my test uh, email account here, Old Man McTweedy at Gmail. And you can see some minor changes to that. And I won't spend a lot of time on this because we cover it in quite a few of the videos 
but uh, you can see the header stays at the top, so if I'm going down through an email, I can easily reply, forward, reply all, and I have my archive delete buttons down at the bottom. Now obviously these are you know, stock Android over here, TouchWiz over here, a little bit of a difference when it comes to the phone menu. So we can go into the phone menu over here and you can see the button differences as opposed to what vanilla Android looks like. That's the difference and you can see at the bottom over here on the vanilla on the G2X you have the voicemail button, the call button, and then the back button and some basic island keys. And over here a little bit more colorful, kind of goes along with that orange uh, slash espresso, uh, excuse me, orange slash espresso theme, I can't talk, uh, that was with this device. And then you have your call, your messaging, and your voice dialing button. So call log, favorites, contacts, same thing up here. These are just flipped around. So a little bit of a difference, not much, but if you notice, this one, as opposed to what Android really supposed to look like, where it scrolls up and down, you'll notice that this looks a lot like iOS. And before, you know, when people before Verizon had the iPhone, they said, "Which phone should I get? Which phone should I get?" I would always say, "Go with a Fascinate or something like that," because TouchWiz does look a lot like iPhone. It's really not surprising to me that there's a lawsuit with uh, with Samsung and Apple because it does look very similar. So you can see these little boxed-in apps, a little bit of space in between, and instead of scrolling up to down like typical Android, it scrolls from left to right like typical iOS. So you see the similarities, you have your four icons down here, quite similar, uh, and you know, for somebody that doesn't want an iPhone, somebody that wants that 4G connectivity, but wants something that's relatively easy to use, this is your one. Both have 8 megapixel cameras, the uh, Droid Charge is capable of shooting in 720p, this is capable of shooting in 1080p, so on the camera front I have to give it to the G2X just for the fact that it's more capable as opposed to uh, the Droid Charge. So 1080p, 720p obviously more capable. That said, I think the image quality is very comparable when you're taking still pictures between the two devices. I think both are very good in that department. We'll bring in the, uh, the Galaxy S2 just to do a quick picture test here. And uh, let's see if we can get the autofocus to work on this one. And you can see autofocus, you know, a little bit washed out, relatively decent. For an 8 megapixel camera on a phone, it's okay. And, uh, you know, image quality, even when it's close, is pretty good. Now, let's do this one uh, as well. It's still quality is very, very good on Samsung devices, notoriously uh, good. If you think back to the Galaxy S devices from last year, let's see. Bring that in. Uh, do, 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 bring it in. It doesn't seem to want to focus. Both of these are having issues. Let's see. It's not focused. Let's get it focused in here. Yeah, there we go. I can't seem to get this one to focus on the correct. Let's get it zoomed out a little bit. I have some issues getting this one to focus in, but the image quality has always been very good for me. You can see, um, let's get, as you can see, image quality seems to be kind of out of place. That one's pretty decent. Um, but outside, absolutely fantastic. Colors are rich. They look good on both of these devices. But I have to give the edge in the, uh, the camera department to the, uh, to the G2X. Let's take a look at Quadrant Standard and then do a speed test and then we'll, uh, we'll be out of here. Quadrant Standard, very, very fast in the G2X. I don't want to spoil it for you too much, but very fast. And we'll talk about call quality as well. I've been pretty pleased with both of these devices. You know, I've worked with, I actually have been traveling pretty extensively lately. I've taken both of these to Orlando, San Francisco, New York, and I've been in the Charlotte metro area, and both have been uh, very, very good. I haven't had any call quality issues. I've heard some scattered reports of the G2X having some call quality issues, but uh, I haven't had anything uh, to report on my end. It's been fantastic. Uh, I took it to a dead spot in North Charlotte, and it was able to hold the call while it was pretty, you know, kind of choppy. I couldn't hear what the person was saying. It didn't drop it. And same thing over here. This one's been exceptionally well. Battery life has been surprisingly good on the Droid Charge as well. It has a 1600 milliamp battery. Uh, it's been very good. It's held its charge. Both of these have done well throughout the day. Obviously, they're Android devices. They're constantly connected. They're not going to last, uh, you know, with moderate use or heavy use throughout the day. But I made it through the evening before both of these required a recharge. That said, Samsung notoriously slow when it comes to charging. You plug your device in, it takes forever. And, uh, you know, that's no exception over here. So, Quadrant Standard 2437 over here. 2437. This one's still loading. Like I said, I had those 4G issues uh, where it keeps cutting in and out, but overall call quality has been fantastic and uh, battery life's been pretty decent on both of these devices. Pretty surprised at this one given that it had a dual core processor that it made it through the day with that 1500 milliamp battery. 974 over here, 974 
in comparison to 2,437. Now, I always, always take it with a grain of salt because you know these tests don't really take into account or take into account day-to-day -day use. Both of these have been fine in day-to-day, -day, but there is a noticeable speed difference, especially if you get a chance, play with both of these because there is a noticeable speed difference between the uh, Droid Charge and the G2X speed test time. Let's see. Get it loaded up on our servers, finding closest server. For whatever reason, the Charlotte server disappeared uh, a couple weeks ago, so it's been doing uh, its other server. And let's see, bam, begin test, begin test. And let's let the magic happen. Now I'm sure Verizon's uh, LT is probably gonna zoom ahead here. As you can see, yeah, about 14, about 15 megabits per second on the download, about 5.8 on the upload. On this one, 5.41 uh, megabits per second. Upload looks to be about 1.5. So LT is very fast. Here's the trade-off, though. It's fast when it works. And so, like I said, I've been with Mobile Hotspot, been testing it, playing with it, trying to use it for work. And, uh, you know, I've run into issues where it just cuts off, cuts in, cuts out. And it's, these, and it's constant issues. So do you want faster that maybe has some connectivity issues because of growing pains? Or do you want something that's still very fast, it's slower obviously, but more reliable? I've used this and tethered it and been very pleased with how consistent it is. So it's up to you, obviously faster, more consistent. So that's the dogfight. You know, one winner has to be declared and I'm giving it, you know, and it's always by narrow edge or so it seems with these smartphones. Narrow edge on this one goes to the G2X. The G2X is the winner of this dogfight. It's a much faster device. A clean vanilla build makes it incredibly fast, easy, um, relatively easy to use, speedy, and uh, I've been very pleased with the 4G speeds, been very pleased with how it performs. Quadrant standard looks great, and it's very consistent. 1080p video recording is a nice plus as well. That said, the Droid Charge is an awesome device, and if you watch my dogfight with a Thunderbolt, it uh, was number one against the Thunderbolt. So it's definitely a good device, but I think in this comparison, the G2X is the clear winner. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with the Droid Charge and the G2X on the site. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash PhoneDog. We're giving away iPads, phones, and more as part of our colossal iPad 2 and smartphone sweepstakes. So be on the lookout, register for that, facebook.com slash PhoneDog, and tune into the giveaways every Tuesday and Thursday. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. And on Facebook, if you'd like, at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.